Welcome to Freedom Motivated with Christina Whiteley, the podcast that empowers you to live life on your terms. Are you uninspired, bored, and unhappy with where life has taken you and yearning for a life filled with purpose and passion? Look no further. We are here to ignite that fire within, to awaken your true potential, and to guide you on a journey towards absolute freedom. Join us as we delve into the minds of incredible entrepreneurs and freedom leaders from very different backgrounds with incredible stories. Be inspired by their resilience and learn from their challenges they faced along the path to success. These are the brave individuals who fight every day to awaken people to the power of self-responsibility and who inspire them to create a life they are absolutely in love with. Each episode will explore the concept of conscious income creation, building a business or creating a career that aligns with your unique skill set, purpose, values, and belief system. Discover the strategies, tips, and invaluable insights shared by our guests as they guide you towards making a living doing what you love. It's time to break free from the shackles of conformity and embrace the freedom that awaits. Are you ready to take control of your life? Are you ready to step into the life you've always dreamed of? Then welcome to Freedom Motivated, the podcast that will ignite your spirit and unleash your potential. All right, we should be live here on Facebook. I'm also going to record this as a podcast because I think it's really important. You know, mental health and and mental wellness keeps coming up as well as mental performance. Uh, It's something as a coach that I am a huge advocate of, growing your mental strength, becoming more emotionally intelligent, being able to mad, uh, be able to manage your emotions. Um, but I wanted to have this conversation uh, with my new friend, Sami Eskelin. And I want to just introduce him really quickly uh, because he has quite a track record. And I feel really grateful to have partnered with him and his wife, Mandy. They're some of the most brilliant minds that I've ever been around when it comes to nutrition and really fueling yourself with the proper uh, things to be able to function at your highest capacity. Uh, Sami has been a part of the Finnish military in special operations operations uh, and security. He has coached people in health and wellness for the last 20 years. Uh, He also is a fitness trainer with his wife and they have trained celebrities and pro athletes and business professionals. Uh, And he also has helped develop a nutrition program that is used Uh, all around the world in 50 different countries. Uh, So he's highly knowledgeable when it comes to this. And I really want to have this conversation about mental health and mental wellness, uh, because after the last few years, I think we all have had a stint of anxiety or depression or stress. And sometimes we even see it in our kids. And to take away that stigma, which I don't think is there anymore because we've all been through something and to be able to talk about it openly and honestly, you guys all know if you've been listening or watching for a while that I'm a huge advocate of having counsel but I also am a huge advocate of living in a healthy environment and putting yourself in front of people that have a lot more knowledge than you so you can learn from them, giving yourself the proper exercise and sleep and nutrition that you need to function at a high level, which is really important to me right now being pregnant. Uh, But without further ado, Sami, I would love to have this conversation with you. I think it's an important one to have and to help educate people so that they can truly live their best life as well. Well, awesome. Thank you so much for having me, Christina. And and I'm, I'm, I'm geeking about this topic, so I can talk about this for hours and hours and hours. But uh, but once again, thank you so much for having this call. It's, it's been absolutely a pleasure to partner up with and and, and, and business icon like you and just <laughs> big heart and a big mission and big passion towards this, uh, towards just bettering people in every possible way. So I'm excited. Awesome. So I would just love if you could share a little bit about yourself and, uh, you know, how you got into the fitness space and, and, you know, what you've learned in the process, because you also hold multiple degrees in science and nutrition uh, and are able to kind of break things down. I do not have a science brain. I have a a bit of a business brain, a bit of a creative brain, but the science piece of it, my best friend, I keep her really close because she's super educated when it comes to that. But I would love to hear from you. And this is, this is like one of my favorite topics to learn about because we, we want to properly optimize our body so that we feel good all the time, right? And also be a really great example for our kids. So do you want to give people a little bit of a background about you? Um, yeah, I don't know even where to start. I, I'm literally, if you wonder my name, I'm actually originally from Finland. Uh, hence, I spend all the time in Finnish military. But uh, um, my introduction in sports were probably when I was about four years old. 
<clears throat> and why I say this is because when about five, six or seven years old, <clears throat> I went to my went to my dad and I, I keep wrecking my bike, <clears throat> my bicycle all the time. And eventually my dad ended up end up uh getting just annoyed fixing it all the time. So by the time uh, I broke my my bicycle again. My friends had bicycles and I had to run. So that's <laughs> really developing myself the first time. <laughs> so I have to I have to give my give kudos to my dad. But uh, I got informally in sports. <clears throat> my sport was soccer. Uh, I, I I a lot. I, I prefer summer a lot more over winter. So that's why soccer was my 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 sport. And uh, and uh, soon after that. <clears throat> After seven, I got into martial arts, started from karate and eventually attended Muay Thai. <clears throat> and um, I really started taking it seriously fairly early age. So by the time I was like 12 years old, I, I knew that I want to be a, <clears throat> a soccer professional. And at that point, I actually started studying about nutrition. So when I was 13 years old, so I'm going to I'm going to date myself. So I'm, I'm in my mid 40s right now. So <clears throat> so about over 30 years ago, I actually ended up going to the library. Uh, the school when all my friends were uh, burying themselves in the comic books and all those fun books I actually got my first biology book <clears throat> my nutrition book my first like sport athletic bible and and <clears throat> whatever was available this was early 90s so because I just wanted to learn how I can become a better soccer player my commitment was very clear in the very beginning <clears throat> and uh, and that's how I kind of developed the science brain probably and uh, when I played a couple of different sports and then did martial arts all the way through till I was 19. <laughs> and uh, by the time I'm 19, Finland has a mandatory armed service. <clears throat> so you can get it done in a year. Uh, I decided, well, if I'm going to, if this is something that I want to do and it, what I have to do, <laughs> I'm a very patriotic person for my own country. Uh, Finland has a big history unfortunately with war and, and and my grandparents fought in in several wars and so I felt my dad responsibility to give my best <clears throat> so I applied to one of the special operations community end up getting in they end up sending my office to school and I end up being overall in military for 11 years a few years active and uh, then the rest of it we serve uh, right after active duty I got recruited for one of the biggest security companies in the world but uh uh, I, I, I'm personality wise, I need to have multiple things going on. So I went to school, I got into a sport institute that's very prestigious. It's one of the Olympic cities in Finland, Lahti, and uh, they have a massive, massive, massive sport campus where all world-class athletes come do their camps. <clears throat> Anything from F1 drivers to uh, track and field teams all around the world, they were practicing and having their camps in that institute where I got my degrees. <clears throat> so I had a very comprehensive view on performance. <clears throat> and um, and I ended up graduating from there, ended up getting a few other degrees along the way. And, and uh, my approach for coaching was <clears throat> um, started coaching different athletes. So, and eventually I transitioned uh, creating protocols and systems and stuff like that. And uh, I moved to U.S. 14 years ago, met my amazing wife. She's she's also one of the uh, now retired one of the top fitness pros in the world. So we work together side by side and uh, and really helping people in, in all different aspects, how to uh, repair themselves, but also how to improve themselves and, and how to gain um, just a higher quality life overall. I love that. And you guys are, are living in, in Las Vegas. Yeah. Um, and you know, what's really interesting about this is that, you know, you studied nutrition and are working with high performers, celebrities, professional athletes, business professionals. Um, but a lot of that also comes with mindset. A lot of that comes with mental wellness. <laughs> and, and when you pair the two together, that's what makes you unstoppable. And so that's why I'm really excited to have this conversation today, uh, okay. because we want to talk about the holistic view of mental wellness, the holistic view of mental performance and what that looks like and what you need to take into consideration to be able to perform at a very high level. And so can you, can you, you know, maybe delve into that a little bit and we can have a conversation about it? Yeah, absolutely. And I love that you brought that up because that's exactly how I started point, like kind of reviewing the services that we're providing because there's never just one absolute way how to improve someone's like what protocol it is. 
I know there's a lot of different uh, influencers that are promoting ketogenic diet, uh, intermittent fasting on some level, time restricted eating, calorie restrictions, don't need carbs, don't need meat, don't do that. Or only eat meat. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, or eat only meat, exactly. The carnivore yeah. diet. And sure. ultimately, you can't just take one aspect and what's best on paper. You also have to take consideration psychology and the, 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 the behavior mechanism on, on someone's people because I can I can get people's result on multiple different protocols, <clears throat> but it's not just what's the best on paper, what's the best on what fits on their mindset. And ideal world people are gonna be like, well, I'm willing to do whatever it takes. And whenever they say that, it's not. If right. something is inconvenient, you're gonna have a lot more difficulties to stay on that. So that's my approach always being that it's a, uh, I rather want to put people someone that's eighty percent effective, but it's hundred percent. Um, it's hundred hundred percent something attainable that you can keep up with that, <laughs> rather than it's ninety nine percent effective and people fall off from it after a first month. Yeah. <clears throat> so that's one thing that I took into consideration, and and also <clears throat> I can give someone an absolutely the Lamborghini or the Rolls Royce of plants. Like, here's what you're gonna eat. <clears throat> and we had some some very wealthy people that I said like, <clears throat> here's what you're gonna do. Here's exactly what you're gonna eat. We used to create plans for people when they were traveling. So I, I was mapping out the hotels where they were living, what food delivery services, what in uh, what kind of food there is in, in um, room service what's restaurants around and I built their meal, weekly plans in a very high level. They paid me a lot, a lot of money with that. But ultimately, what dictated are they gonna be successful or not? It's gonna be their mood and emotions because humans are emotional, emotional animals. People like to think that they're logical thinkers. And, and <clears throat> some, people, some people are more logical and some emotional, but ultimately there's always a collaboration between the logic and emotion but it's it's never just pure logic we make the decision based on emotions and then we then we just kind of explain it to ourselves in a logic way it's like yeah this is this is what i'm gonna do we rationalize and yeah and then there's also there's so much psychology on our behavior and <laughs> where how we cope with different downfalls meaning <clears throat> let's just say take a very simple simple uh, construct of someone feeling down and uh let's let's take someone like ice cream or cookies right <laughs> ice cream and cookies they are they're very or put them together and have an ice cream sandwich well that's that's it that's the <laughs> even, even looking at something like cookies when even when we're like 30s 40s and 50s we have a bad day and then we're like wow i'm just gonna go get it cookie or something, or I'm going to get a box of cookies, I'm going to eat it. This all relates to your coping mechanism when you go in, when you think about the time when you first time ate cookies, maybe it was your grandmother giving you a cookie and that just made you feel warm and fuzzy. And we, it's so ingrained in our behavior mechanism. So as we get older and we're like mid, mid age, and we're going to have a lot of stress, we still revert and seek into that same and warm and fuzzy feeling. So that's when we start getting these like coping mechanisms, like, hey, I wanna, I wanna, I wanna chase that same feeling when I had 30 years ago, 40 years ago, right. that cookie, and it's gonna put me right in that place. So these are always like things that we need to take into consideration. But uh, mental wellness is, is something that I've been in tune with that ever since I was. Ultimately, in military, <clears throat> Finnish military uh, develop a, a leadership program that's now being used for Fortune 500 companies all around the world mm -hmm. uh, in depth leadership, and it it addresses a lot about mental behavior, mental performance, and and mental wellness. In in in, in it assesses it in 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 a very deep aspect. So when <clears throat> I I still started carrying some of those concepts on my coaching business, but ultimately when I had ability to start working with the mental wellness company that I'm that I'm working on right now, 
it, it was a very easy transition because it addressed every single aspect of it that I've learned in the 20 years of dealing with different kinds of people. Anything from special operators and high performers to someone who's never performed in high level <clears throat> mentally or physically, and then starting to teach these aspects, how to kickstart that mechanism by fine tuning your body and your body's chemistry, and then start teaching and how to incorporate these <clears throat> healthier uh, coping mechanisms so now you can build a better mental performance mental wellness as a whole that totally makes sense to me and and what i uh, what i'm writing down here so that i don't forget to say is you know as humans we don't always sign up for the hard road we don't always sign up to prevent a problem or to deep dive into some of the emotions that may make us eat that way or drink that way right mm -hmm. it might not be a cookie it might be a glass of wine or a margarita mm -hmm. Right. It might be something else that we use to cope to, to quote, take the edge off, whatever that is. And often as humans, we just want to band aid the problem and fix it right away because we don't want to have to go through the pain of unpacking it or yeah. unlocking it. Or like, God forbid, a few years back, I learned that I had a gluten sensitivity and we had to throw everything in the house out that had gluten in it or else I'd eat it. Right. And so, like, like you said, we can rationalize the logic behind the things that we use as a band aid or we can look at the root cause so that we can truly live in joy and live in high performance and be able to function at a high level with our, you know, our mental state. And so I, I'm sure that you've seen that over the years as well. Yeah, ab absolutely. And it's actually very easy to pick up. There is, and this is what I also coach the people that I work with a lot is when you hear these trigger words that this doesn't feel right, those are more emotional thinkers. And then once some, someone says this makes sense, they're more logical thinkers. So that's immediate window of how their mind operates. So this allows me to also approach that approach that coaching aspect. Am I going to go into logic aspect or am I going to approach this in an emotion aspect first and then, then kind of sliding the logic afterwards? But yes, absolutely. There, people have different coping mechanisms. Some, some things are healthy. Some people just want to go and <clears throat> kind of sweat it out or go to the gym or go yeah. run or whatever. <clears throat> and like you said, some people just want to go and have a margarita or two and go get their friends together and just kind of like bury the problems and <clears throat> not deal with it or just choose to deal with them later, which they usually the later never comes. <laughs> Yeah, and I think that sometimes, um, you know, we we fail to look at things holistically. We fail to look at things when it comes to our health holistically. And, and what I mean by that is, you know, the food that you're putting in your body. We teach our daughter, who's almost seven now, like everything that you eat, because candy is a big thing down here in Mexico. It's not something that we do, but like we teach her everything that you eat either fuels your health or fuels your sickness. And so whether it is, a, you know, a supplement or the food that you're eating, getting eight hours of sleep. I used to say, sacrifice sleep as a mom I think that's really common that we sacrifice sleep because especially if we're a working mom maybe dad too um, but we sacrifice our sleep because we we want to be everything for everybody and I realized for many years I even lived on sleep deprivation and like not actually functioning cognitively at my highest level because I didn't get that eight hours of sleep or drink enough water or do the things that were really good for us so when when you see um, you know, mental health and physical health holistically, you know, what's, what are the really important things to pay attention to? Um, uh, mental wellness, obviously, when you're looking at stress, stress is a big factor in, in mental wellness in a lot of different ways. Uh, you can have emotional stress, you might have uh, environmental stress, you have, you might have emotional stress. Uh, emotional stress, they all have a kind of similar uh, biochemical <clears throat> process in your body there's there's different so i understand that there's the biochemistry that's all also there and it's a cyclical with your behavior and everything else so they both feed on each other <clears throat> so that's why i want to know that like i want to when i approach better mental wellness and mental performance i want to i want people to understand that there's the there's there's different things that you can start affecting now obviously building resiliency in in grit and I, I always promote like healthy mind comes with healthy body. That means that you can condition your body uh, to cope with cortisol, cope with stress. Uh, if you condition it to recover from physical stress. So push yourself, um, push yourself hard. And I, I'm a big kind of philosophy geek too. And, and Seneca is, is one of my big, uh, my, my favorite philosophers. So he has a quote that, um, you need to treat your body vigorously 
to tell the brain uh, who's in charge. Yeah. So uh, I don't know what's that the exact verbatim, but basically you have to really push yourself in order to tell like, hey, no, I'm in charge of you. You're not in charge of me. So this is something that it kind of it kind of talks into the fact that condition yourself physically so you can then manage your emotions more mentally as well. Uh, other things that you say, nutritional deficiencies, <laughs> um, big, big factor. Uh, I come from Finland. <clears throat> Finland didn't adopt the whole organic or organic brand until like a few years ago because everything was basically organic. So the, the concept was or organic wasn't even advertised. Yeah. <clears throat> but when I moved to US 14 years ago, uh, I still kept eating the same exact foods and everything else. And uh, within like less than two years, I started experiencing a lot of different kinds of issues. <clears throat> Anything from allergies to digestive issues, a lot of digestive issues. And I was like, what is going on? And once again, my logical brain went into, let's start reading about what's going on here in science and agriculture. And that led me into mass farming and, and overturning of the soil. And, and um, U.S. is down to 16% of nutrient density compared to 1980s. <clears throat> Not just 100 years ago, like 1980s. And <clears throat> this means that apple a day keeps a doctor away. It's like, no, absolutely not. It's a two bag full of apples keeps a doctor away, but who eats two bags of apples just to get some, some vitamin dose. Yeah. So, <clears throat> so I, I started realizing that, no, now I need to really start taking into the supplementation. Supplementation is not the cornerstones. It's what the name said, is to supplement, to fill the gaps. <clears throat> and my, my also idea about the mental wellness is that we're, we're getting more and more anxious in a modern day pace. <clears throat> and once again, I'm, there was a study that compared to 1990s, <clears throat> uh, 1990s, we were taking out about 40 bits per second information human brain was taking. Now that amount is 40 million bits per second. So we're taking million times more information than we're taking um, 1990s, 30 years ago. So this leads into people having anxiety levels nowadays, even kids, teenagers, anxiety levels of a 1980s, 1990s asylum patient. So I thought science has taken us into this partially. So science is also going to help us get out of this. And that's that's why I love that there are so many different, <clears throat> we're starting to understand human body more. We're starting to understand human biochemistry a lot more. We understand, we start mapping up gut biome. We're starting mapping out brain. <clears throat> and there are some great, great, great companies that are able to now start addressing some of these issues, not as a, a one pill cure all. Right but able to bring these nutritional triggers that are able to then set the body in the right course again. Now, you still have a responsibility to make right choices, but if I can tell your body to be in a more, more of like state of positive like thinking, you tend to make more, like, tend to make better precision, uh, decisions compared to just feeling anxious, stress, where you're going to go into that class of, wine or a cookie or a pizza or a burger or french fries or something like that so because happy people make better decisions uh usually than sad people so yeah yeah i can tell you that for sure um you know it's interesting we talk about stress and and we're as humans not meant to have all of this information given to us at all these times you know my my great grandmother's from italy she had an acre garden she lived on her own until she was 103 ate from her garden worked in her garden and i was like that seems healthy like that seems like something that you know that she lived a really long time she lived a great life cognitively she was always there like till the day she died and i i think that now there's so much distraction and so we have to start educating ourselves on these things and when i learned that it was my gut health that could control a lot of my hormones the dopamine and serotonin that are in my brain the happiness factor right can bring me more joy i started paying a lot more attention to my gut health and i also you know i've been introduced to nootropics um i've been introduced to other supplements that have helped me like you said you know our our vitamins that we're getting out of our our food are not nearly enough to function anymore because we've over so we've over farmed and, and our soils are not as nutrient dense anymore mm -hmm. 
And so it's finding the right the right mix. There's no, like you said, one size fits all, and there's no one product that fits everybody, but there are multiple things that you could be aware of that you could be improving. And the other piece of it that I didn't know for a really long time is that as somebody that uh, is now pregnant, um, my gut health actually determines my baby's gut health. And so if I'm not paying attention to that and infusing my gut health with something that's really, really healthy for him, he's got to start off with, you know, a, a, not a not a full spectrum. And I think that so often we didn't realize that we weren't educated on that growing up. You know, our nutrition system, we're not educated on. It's just it, it's something that we lack knowledge of unless we have a health issue. And usually that's when people start looking into it. Right. When they start to have a health issue. And after the last few years, there's so many people that have have lived with anxiety or so many people that have lived with stress and depression that is just compounded and compounded and they're like i don't feel good and so like what would you tell people if they're they're looking for a solution and they want to be able to uh start feeling more like themselves like have you ever you hear people say that i just want to feel like myself again you know like so what what would be like some of the key factors that you would uh suggest to people that that really want to improve how they feel on a daily basis their mood their hormones uh, you know, their mental wellness, as well as their physical health, what are the things that they should be paying attention to? Um, that's, that's a, that's a loaded question. I know. <laughs> and I love that. I love that. It's a loaded question because it, it shouldn't be just like, Hey, just do this and you're good. So <clears throat> everything starts obviously from sleep. Sleep needs to be just not time in a bed, not just head in a pillow, but sleep needs to be something that's high, good quality. Uh, you're even looking at, uh, a lot of the experts says that kids and teenagers, ADD and ADHD, they are not, they're actually misdiagnosis. They are actually sleeping disorders because we're so stimulated. So inability to brain to just go to sleep, even though we're, we must like, Hey, I, I close my eyes and I can't remember the past seven hours. But when you're really looking at sleep studies, they might brain only might be in sleep for maybe about three, four hours. But whatever you have control over is just to make sure that you don't burn the candle from both ends. Like make sure that you get that, try to get that seven hours in bed. Four or five hours is not enough. It just, it's just not enough. So the sleep needs to be there. Uh, same thing, waking up in the morning, routine, your body loves routine. And, it, and it's something we have. We have even internal hormonal routine in our body. We have our... Yeah, endocrine system has uh, has different kind of cyclical factors. So that means that when when the sun gets up, we should probably get up when the sun gets up. And uh, and so make sure that you get enough time in a bed. Try to put that phone away and try to just kind of uh, de-stress yourself. <clears throat> Maybe start lowering at lights at the evening. Uh, avoid any screen time, especially right in front of your phone. Maybe you can watch a little TV, but read a book that helps your brain to go in, kind of go in a deep rest state. But in the morning, try to get sunlight first thing in the morning, like go outside, get some fresh air, do some breathing exercises. I have a breathing routine that I'm doing every morning. I, I focus on gratitude and I'm, I'm a big goal setter. So I, I set goals first thing in the morning. My wife and I, we have that same routine. Uh, we have our supplementation that we take every single <clears throat> morning throughout the day. We have our morning supplementation and we have our, some of the nutritional add-ons that we add every single day. And then we have our evening supplementation so we can make sure that we can maximize those effects on um, throughout the day. But then uh, I, I try to move my body every single day. I, I make sure that I get physical <clears throat> exercise every single day. It doesn't have to be very sternness, uh, heavy weight lifting, everything else. Sometimes it might just be going and walking my wife, going, going and around with my dog. And, and that, that might be it, but eating, uh, eating healthy throughout the day. Uh, I don't, there are some benefits in time restricted eating, but I'm a huge fan of, uh, blood sugar control, blood sugar levels, uh, dictate a lot of your cravings and your moods and emotions, as well as your hormone levels. I want to make sure those are optimized. And then in the evening, I want to make sure once again, like going back to like put myself in a restful state so I can then get a, a good night's sleep. So those are something that everyone can focus on daily basis. And I say, I can't take your stress away when people have, and that's, that's something that I say, like, listen, 
if you have responsibilities, if you have kids, if you're married, if you have a job, no, you're going to have stress no matter what you say. But what I can help you is help you cope with the stress that it doesn't disrupt the quality of your life. You're not going to be snappy with your kids. You're not going to be snappy with your special someone, with your friends, with your coworkers. And you can see the world in a better light through kind of like a lighter filter. And all these things that I'm doing can affect up that in a very effective way. Yeah. And I think it's about upgrading your habits too. And the standards that you set for yourself, it's just, it's just changing what is normal in your life. And, you know, my husband goes, he's been going to CrossFit every morning, almost every morning, like six days a week for 15 years. People always say, well, how long have you been doing this for? He's like 15 years. And every morning he is like, oh, I don't feel like going every morning, you know, like still 15 years later. And every time he gets home, I'm like, how was it? He was like hard. Right. And so it takes that mental capacity and that mental wherewithal to make yourself do the hard thing. I think a lot of the time, and, and, and sometimes we give ourselves an out, right. That logic piece comes in and we're like, oh, we don't need to do it today. We can do it tomorrow. Um, and the other piece of it is, you know, and, and I wasn't necessarily going to talk about this, but I, but I do want to bring it up because you know, I've been in the health and wellness space for eight years now, since I since I was sick um, and, and really didn't know what was wrong with me. I kept going to health professionals and trying to figure out what was wrong with my digestion. And they just kept prescribing me medication. And I was like, so what are the side effects of this medication? Oh, heart disease, liver disease, all these other things. And I was like, okay, so this isn't a solution. And so when we finally figured out the sensitivities, the food sensitivities I had, I realized that supplementation was really important. Mm -hmm. And so that alone, you know, including your immune system, system, including your energy levels, including all of those things. Um, it's been really interesting over the years to try different things and see what works for my body and what doesn't. You know, I'm a, I am a huge fan of nootropics. I find that it, they help me focus a lot better. Um, but I also really started focusing on gut health and that's that's how you know i met you and mandy is because uh you guys are, are representing a company that has a really great gut health product that is specifically formulated for that gut brain access and for mental wellness and you know I'm going to tell you, Sami, while we're having this conversation, I was pretty skeptical in the beginning because I've tried all different things, but I've never had something that literally turned on. Like I, I felt a difference within a couple of days. Um, I saw a difference in my daughter. Uh, my family started taking it and like then I ran out because they couldn't get enough of it. And I think that sometimes um, we have to experiment with multiple different things to find the thing that actually works for us. But when you do, having a new habit, a higher standard of, of nutrition or a higher standard of who you surround yourself with, a higher standard of what you're learning and what you put up with in your life, right? I think that all of those things contribute to your mental health and your and your well-being. Um, and, and, you know, when you've worked with pro athletes and when you've worked with celebrities that have trusted you with, <clears throat> with their health, um, do you notice a common factor between people that are high performers? <clears throat> Absolutely. Most of them have built their habits ever since they were they were young in some shape or form like that's just it comes in it's 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 a learned factor but i also want to say that if you if you haven't grown into that in a young age you can still learn those habits and like you said <clears throat> everyone can put an alarm on at 6 a.m in the morning but what happens when it's time to open up the eyes and and ignore that like just get out of the bed like like your husband ryan just going in a crossfit class like that's that's when we have a window of opportunity. Now we can supplement you the moment where that allows you to have that, um, take action on that moment of moment of like inspiration, like hey, I'm gonna go do the workout. But neurotropics is something that I've been used for over 20 years, and, and neurotropic is actually, it's a it's a very very big, actually like when you even even Adderall. Adderall is actually nootropic. What is nootropic? No, nootropic is actually cognitive enhancer. That's what it is. It increases the blood flow in your brain and it increases your glucose metabolism in your brain, meaning your brain can be more alert. Now, through nootropic, you can feel more materially, you can feel more alert, and there's going to be a mental wellness aspect of it, but there's going to be also other things that's going to be affecting on it. So when you actually <clears throat> approach the mental wellness and mental performance, mood, emotion from the gut aspect, but also brain aspect, 
And then you're going to start also addressing the physical aspect because your hormonal balance as well is going to be dictating your mood and everything else. So gut health is absolutely something that you should address first. And, and when you're looking at something like you mentioned uh, uh, food intolerances, nobody knew about food intolerances uh, back in the day, but where it basically comes in like leaky gut syndrome, like yeah. really a lot of people have leaky gut syndrome. And, and that means that your, your gut has a, like a mucus layer. It has a, it has a mucus layer that's protecting it. If our, if, if there's an inflammatory foods or, or toxins and stuff like that in your gut, it's going to stretch that gut biome the undigested food gets to your bloodstream and your bloodstream. And, and now your body addresses that at, Hey, I have attacked in my bloodstream. I have to create antibodies. And now you have an, an, an stress effect on your body. Yeah. And sometimes this happens, even when you eat same foods over and over again, even though they're healthy, I'm eating avocado toast every single day, because that's healthy. Eventually you will develop insensitivities towards that toast and avocado, even though they're single handed, they, they're pretty healthy. So you, so you have to diversify a lot of your habits, but there are once again, supplementation and lifestyle changes that you can do to make sure that gut biome stays healthy. And why the gut biome is, is so important because people often doesn't know that, but serotonin is mostly created in your gut. It's, it's the happiness and positivity neurotransmitter that allows you to feel that happiness and, and create mood and everything else. Dopamine is another one. Now, another mood enhancing uh, neurotransmitter or, or third one would be GABA. It's a gamma aminobutyric acid. So it's something that allows your body to feel in a state of calmness. It's, it's something that when you have all those dopamine, serotonin, and GABA, when they are optimized in your body, not too high, not too low, when they're optimized in your body, now you can feel this healthy cycle of mood and emotions without being too reactive, but still being uh, motivated enough so it gets you out of the couch and able to go through certain kind of activities. Now, where the, and what happens when your gut functions well, then there's the gut-brain axis. It's something called the vagus nerve. Vagus nerve is something that, as we're, when we're fetuses in, in, in the belly of our mom's stomach, that means that your brain and the gut is a one single organism. It's one single one. And as the fetus grows, the gut and the brain grows into two separate things, but they are still connected by vagus nerve. Vagus nerve is everywhere in your body. So your gut and brain communicates together with that. And that's why we sometimes get like, hey, we have a butterflies in my stomach when we get excited and stuff like that. There's constant communication. So if you want to address what your brain is doing, you want to address the gut as well. That is where the most effective reactions are being created. And that's through these neurotransmitters that communicates between that. Now, the nootropic is still something that I use every day. And the company that I'm, I'm part of it, we, we still use nootropic. It could be something like acetylcholine. Acetylcholine right. is just a phenomenal because it increases your cerebral blood flow. It, it opens up those uh, little ve veins and capillaries in your neck and allows your brain to have more oxygen and nutrients. And then it also... Um, activates other neurotransmitter that communicate to your body as well. So neurotropic, you still want to feel alert when you're feeling happy. When you have that alertness, cognitive enhancement, and your positive mood and motivation, that's when you can actually now have a foundation where you can build that everyday structure. So that's why I'm so, <clears throat> I'm, I'm moving more on that, uh, that just physical health and performance aspect to literally going on that on a, on the gut biome and the mental wellness and mental performance because that feeds all your lifestyle habits. That what do, ends up affecting on your decision making process. And and then there's also a third aspect of that mood and emotion, which is your hormonal health. Yeah. It's again, and what dictates your hormonal health? Well, a lot of times it's cortisol. Yeah. What affects cortisol? Well, stress. Cortisol is your stress hormone. That means it's made out of the same building blocks than estrogen, testosterone. So when you're in a constant state of stress, if you are unable to cope with that stress in a way that it's healthy, 
If your gut health is bad, you don't have any cognitive enhancers, Something you're feeling stressed. Please try again. Sorry, my serious <laughs> I'm talking. Serious listening. <laughs> yeah. So when 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 our cortisol levels are high, that means that we have less building blocks to build testosterone and estrogen. And now this creates mood swings. Now we all understand mood swings. Like we understand the hormonal health is, is there. Like it's it's the longer term effect. So if we want to unpack all that question into one, where you can get the most amount of benefits immediately on your gut biome, start balancing, optimizing your neurotransmitters in your gut, exactly like we do. And you can affect on it very easily, not just by repairing your gut, but there are certain bacteria strains that you can feed in your stomach that literally tells your body, like, imagine your gut is like a keyboard. And you write the key uh, command on a keyboard and your computer is doing a certain things. Exactly how gut works. When you, when you feed certain bacteria strains, what we call phytobiotics and specific probiotics and prebiotics. Now you can tell your body, hey, I want more serotonin. I want a little less uh, dopamine and I want a little more of the GABA whatever where the, where the need it is. So it's adaptogenic effect. So meaning it adapts into that current need. And now you enhance, then the second step, even you, in, you add some cognitive enhancers. Now you're going to start making better choices. Now you're going to make sure that you you make better choices. Now it's going to be this positive compound effect that's going to start changing the life completely. So, and now you can actually think and operate like a very high performing person. And that's that's how I, I usually unpa unpack this biochemistry to a lot of people. Well, I appreciate you taking the time today to do that because what you just said made it so much easier for me to understand, you know? And and that's when it comes down to it, you know, I know that you, you've, you you know, studied so much in the science and nutrition area um, and gone through study after study after study to create these nutrition programs that most people can pick up and just use, but there's so much that goes on behind the scenes and you did a really great job of breaking it down and making it digestible for people like me and, and easy to share, right? It, it like almost sounds like you could, you know, have a takeout order for your, for your gut bio and make sure that you're ordering the right things to make you happy and, uh, and create higher cognitive function. So I really appreciate uh, you taking the time today, Sami, and having this conversation with me and sharing it with my audience. I can't wait uh, to share it with more people because I think that this is, this is the missing link right now. You know, people are sad or they're mad or they're stressed and, and they want to blame exterior factors for those things and, and use that as a, as a coping me mechanism as well. Um, but when we actually take control of our health, we can, we take control of our lives and are able to make better choices on a daily basis that's where we truly find our inner peace and our joy so thank you so much for taking the time today i really appreciate you and uh really really grateful that we've connected over the last few weeks and and looking forward to our future thank you so much thanks for having me and uh, i really do appreciate all the work that you do to helping people in so many different ways so it's been it's been absolutely my pleasure to work with you and and i'm looking forward to see how many how many hundreds of thousands of millions <laughs> we're gonna we're gonna impact positively in the next few years I can't wait. Thank you very much. All right, you guys, for another episode of Freedom Motivated. My name is Christina Whiteley. We will see you again next time. Bye for now. Thank you for tuning in to another inspiring episode of Freedom Motivated with your host, me, Christina Whiteley. We hope that the stories we've shared today have sparked a fire within you and ignited your passion for living life on your terms. Remember, true freedom lies in the choices we make and the actions we take. So go out there and embrace your journey. Take the leap of faith, believe in yourself, and never settle for less than what you deserve. If you've enjoyed this episode, be sure to subscribe to the Freedom Motivated Podcast and never miss out on our upcoming interviews with more incredible entrepreneurs and freedom leaders. Be bold, be brave, be disruptive. You are capable of things far beyond your wildest dreams if you just have the courage to go for it. Thank you for being a part of this incredible community. Until next time, may you always be driven by the desire for freedom and motivated to make your dreams a reality. Thank you.